The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. I am Juan Pamji for now. I am your manual labor teacher for the class of Form 2A. Today, we are going to continue our lesson, our learning process. But before we move on, let's have a look on our table content. We shall examine the following in our introduction. Firstly, we are going to look at the general presentation of the module of the syllabus, the general objectives of the syllabus of manual labor from three, and finally, we are going to look at the general prerequisites of this level of manual labor for form 2. So let's move to the next and look at the general presentation of this syllabus of manual labor for form 3. The manual labor program is made up of five models. We have the first model, which is handicraft. We have the next agriculture, the third model is carpentry, followed by maintenance work, and we finally have the last model, which is landscaping. So I repeat for you to better understand, we have five models in this syllabus of manual labor from Turin. The first is handicraft, followed by agriculture. After that, we have carpentry. Next, maintenance work and finally landscaping so let's look now at the various subtopics under these models under module one which is handicraft we have just one subtopic which is fine arts followed by the next the next the second model which is agriculture on agriculture we shall have two subtopics, which are vegetable farming and animal husbandry. Under vegetable farming, we will deal with the cultivation of crops, roots and pulps for this class of farm Under and under animal husbandry, we will deal with the rearing of rabbits, more precisely. So let's move on and look, let's continue with the subtopics under these models. We'll continue with model three, which is carpentry. Under carpentry, we have one subtopic, which is production of small furniture, followed by maintenance. Maintenance the fault. It has also has one subtopic, which is maintenance work and simple sanitary installations. Lastly, we are going to look at the fit model, which is landscaping. On the landscaping, we shall have one subtopic, which is masonry. Okay. Now that we are done with the presentation of the models, let's look at the second model, which will consist lesson of today. So the second model as we presented before is agriculture. Under agriculture, we have the general objectives of the model. By the end of this model, learners should be able 
to assimilate the basic knowledge in the production of fruits and pulps. Also, learners should be able to assimilate the basic knowledge in the production of rabbit. So, one, you should be able to assimilate the knowledge in the production of roots and pulps. Note, roots and pulp. Next, assimilate the basic knowledge in the production of rabbit. These are the two objectives. Let's now look at the expected outcomes of this model of, hand, of agriculture. By the end of this lesson, of this model, learners should be able to create a small rabbit farm. They should be able to take care of the rabbit farm. And finally, they should be able to sell products from rabbits to earn money. These are the expected outcomes of this model of agriculture. Let's move now to the prerequisites of this model. Learners are expected to have knowledge on the following. They are expected to be able to identify local types of fruits and pulps. What are the local types of fruits and pulps you can find around you? That's what we expect from you, to identify those fruits and pulps. Also, you should, learners should be able to describe a rabbit as least, at least. Learners must have seen a rabbit maybe from the, the biology class, from a biology book, or even in their environment. So you should be able to describe a rabbit before we move into this model. Let's continue by looking at the general presentation of the model. We are going to start with the first subtopic under agriculture. The first subtopic, as we said, is food crop production. Under food crop production, we shall deal with the production of fruits and pulps for this class of form three. This subtopic has a total number of eight lessons. The first lesson is site selection, and it will be the lesson, our lesson of today. The second lesson is soil preparation, followed by sowing roots and pulps. The fourth after that is soil amendment. Next, we'll look at soil protection, followed by irrigation and drainage. Furthermore, we'll look at farm, farm maintenance or care. Finally, we'll have harvesting, conservation, and marketing. So these are the eight lessons that will consist this subtopic food crop production. Let's move now to the next subtopic, subtopic two, which is animal husbandry. As we said earlier, under this subtopic, we shall deal with the production of rabbits. It has a total number of eight lessons. We shall have the first lesson, which is choosing sites and breeds, followed by equipment. Next, construction standards. The fourth lesson will be maintenance work. Furthermore, we shall look at heat process and diseases, followed by slaughtering and skinning, and lastly, conservation and marketing. 
So these are the lessons we are going to, to have under this second part. Let's move and start a lesson. We are going to start our learning session with the first lesson, lesson one, entitled Site Selection. We are going to give the factors to select a site to cultivate roots and bulbs. Let's move on to the lesson plan. A lesson is structured in the following way. We shall have the objectives followed by the prerequisites. Next, we will have the problem situation Furthermore, the lesson content, next the summary, after evaluation and corrections, and finally, we will be given a homework or an assignment to do at home, simply. So let's start with the objectives of this lesson. By the end of this lesson, learners should be able to define keywords they should be able to explain the criteria for choosing a site to plant roots and pulps. Finally, learners should be able to identify and name roots and pulps. The next are prerequisites. This is what learners are expected to know before we move into the content of this lesson. Learners are expected to know types of soil, at least have an idea. They are also expected to know what is a fertile soil. Okay, let's now look at the problem situation. This is a short text. I expect you, I expect that by the end of this lesson, you should be able to deduce the problem from this short text, from this problem situation, and later you will bring or you will suggest solutions to the problem we have raised. So let's read the problem situation together. You have been cultivating carrots on a slope for two years with a very low harvest each year. This year, you would like to change site so as to have a better result. Let's repeat. You have been cultivating carrots on a slope for two years with a very low harvest each year. This year, you would like to change site so as to have a better result. You are expected to deduce the problem from this problem situation and later suggest possible solutions. Let's move on and look at the lesson content. In this lesson, we are going to find the following elements. Firstly, the following items. Firstly, we are going to look at the definition of keywords, followed by criteria for selecting a site to plant roots and bulbs. After that, we are going to look at examples of bulbs and finally examples of fruits so let's start with the definition of keywords we have three or four words that we are going to define which are agriculture sites roots and bulbs agriculture is the cultivation of crops and the rearing of animals. It can be for subsistence or for commercial purpose. When we talk about subsistence, that means you can co cultivate to consume or you can rear animals to consume at home. When you talk about commercial purpose, that is, you can produce in a large scale to sell so as to have, to earn mo to have money. The next word is site. Site 
is the location of a piece of land. Roots are enlarged on the ground part of a plant and pulps are rounded on the ground storage organs formed from the plant stem and leaves. So, you are going to move to the next, which is criteria of selecting a site to plant roots and pulps. What are the factors you must consider before selecting a site if you want to plant roots and pulps? Firstly, you must consider biotic factors and prevalence of pests and disease. We talk about biotic factors, which are microorganisms that can favor the growth of plants. It also includes insects like pollinators. We have, for example, bees that favorize pollination from that favor pollination for, for from your plants, right? We also have the topography. When you choose a site to plant roots and pulps, make sure you choose a flat or gentle, gentle slopey land, slopey, slopey land. So that if you choose, because if you choose a, a slope to plant your roots and pulps, if rain falls, it will take it away. And even runoff will constantly wipe the top soil, which is the most fertile part of the soil. You must also consider the soil requirement, that is, the fertility of the soil, the texture, the color, all that will, will, will lead you to choose a good site. Let's move, let's continue with other criteria to select a site to plant root and pulps. We should also consider the accessibility. That is, you should choose a site which is accessible. You can easily move from your house to the farm, from the farm to the market, and so on and so forth. You should also consider the climate. Make sure you don't choose, don't choose a site where there is constant rainfall if you want to cultivate roots and pulps as it can spoil your, your plants. Don't choose a site where the temperature is too hot. For example, where there is too much heat or it is too cold, where there is too sunlight. Choose a site with moderate temperature. Also, consider marketability, marketability and profitability. That is, choose a site near a large and stable market because you know if you sell if there are enough customers you will sell fast and if you sell fast you also earn profit more profit and very fast also you should consider the resistance to pest and disease make sure you choose a site that is free from pest and disease Make sure you have much, as much information on the site as possible. We will still continue with factors to consider to select a site. You should consider the bureaucracy. This includes administrative bottlenecks, such as business permits and other papers. Make sure you choose a site where these papers can be possessed with ease. Consider the security. Make sure you choose a site in a place where, in a place where this, it is politically stable, where there are less thieves or where the population is honest. As such, your crops will be safe and you will earn more profit. That works also with the honesty of the population. Because if the population is not honest, you will you will lose. You will lose. So you will lose because you will not earn as much or as more benefits as you expected at the beginning. Also, consider the cost of acquisition of land. Make sure you move to an area where the acquisition of land is cheap or is cheaper. 
Also, let's continue still with the factors to consider to choose a site. Consider the labor supply and cost. Make sure you choose a site where the labor supply is enough, where you can easily find people that will help you. For example, to cultivate your crops, even when it's time to harvest, to harvest, make sure you can easily find people. Choose a site where you can easily find people to help you. Avoid areas with calamities, calamities like drought, like earthquakes, and so on. Because if this happens, it can destroy your crops and you will lose. Let's move on and look at the next factor, investment benefits. So to have much benefit, choose a site with tax exemption. That is where the tax and other types of taxes are low so that your benefit should be much. Also consider availability and cost of planting material. Make sure the planting material are available at a very low price and it should be near. Don't just choose a site where you have to travel very far to go and have materials. That would be costly. Okay, now we are going to continue to proceed with a lesson activity. Carefully observe the images beside. Image one, two, and three. Can you name the items on these images? The, the things on these images? Okay. Can you also give a global name for these elements? Let's find out. Image one, or image three, rather, we have carrot. Next image, we have turmeric. And the last, we have shallot. Can you give a global name for these elements? They are roots and pulps. Now, how can you differentiate if this is a root or that's a pulp? Formally, we gave a definition of each for each. Let, let's have some examples. Firstly, for pulps, we have garlic, garlic falls under pulps. We have leek, leek, which is a spice that you often use at home to cook, falls under example of pulps. And finally, you have onion. There exist many types of onion, as you can see on the image, with different colors. Onion also falls on types of pulps. Let's move on with, by looking at examples of roots. We have ginger, we have potato, we have beets, we have sweet potato. Okay. Let's have a summary of what we have done, what we have treated all through this lesson. In this lesson, we define keywords like agriculture, site, roots, and pulps. We also look at criteria of sites to plant roots and pulps. And finally, we looked at examples of, of pulps and of roots. Let's move now to the evaluation and correction. Remember, you were asked at the level of the problem situation to identify the problem, to deduce the problem, and to suggest possible solutions. Now, this is the question. What is the problem in the situation earlier stated? The problem, slow peace sites and low harvest. Now, Next question, we are asked to provide answers to these questions. Let's start with the first question, differentiate between roots and pulps. What's the difference between roots and pulps? Roots 
are enlarged on the ground parts of a plant, while pores are on the ground storage organ formed from the plant stem and leaves. We repeat, roots are enlarged on the ground parts of a plant, while pores are on the ground storage organ formed from the plant stem and leaves. Next question. State three factors you will consider to select a site to plant roots and bulbs. What are three factors you will consider to select a, a site to plant roots and bulbs? Answer. You consider the soil requirement. Next, the market. Also, security. We also talked about bureaucracy and so on. But if you give any of those answers, we are correct. Let's move to the next question. Which appropriate words below describe onion and garlic? Which appropriate word below describes onion and garlic? A. Crops. B. Grains. C. Roots. And C and D. Sorry. And D, pulps. So, what's the answer? Answer is D. Onion and garlic are pulps. Simple. Next question. The next question is a homework. You are going to answer this at home. You are going to take it home, and in our next class, we are going to correct it together. Take it down. Explain the role of the following in farming. A. Hoe. B. Pickaxe. C. Machet or cutlass. And D. Shovel. Let's take over. Explain the role of the following in farming. A. Hoe. B. Pickaxe. C. Machet. Or cutlass and finally shovel. So we are going to do the correction in our next class, in our next lesson. If you need more information, you can do the more research on the sites, on the links, and the books you, you can see on the on the page side. We have come to the end. Of our lesson. In our next lesson, we will be looking at soil preparation. See you next class. Unna tege si ma tege yob, unna tege minga ma tege nyom, unna tege majang ma tege ndom, mane tambia ninya ne injo biayen, gani bana ma tege mot, gani la kiri wa tege ndong, esa kina bia dinki do, mane tambia ninya ne injo biayen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen 